Sylvia Global's host, Gail Sylvia, invites you to join her in these conversations with first ladies of nations, households, business, and communities. Trustworthy, live conversations with women from around the globe provides a place for your voice to connect with women of integrity, passion, and purpose. Now, here's your host, Gail Sylvia. Helena, how are you? Oh, I'm doing well. This is such an honor to be with you um, here. The feelings are, are mutual. Actually, it's, it's me. I, did I tell you it was you? I was like giving deep bows to you like, in terms of, oh, you know who else it was? I was talking to, to um, giving tremendous gratitude, and that's Yancina Larson um, at World Pulse because she's doing just like you phenomenal things around the world. And your vision and your voice and how important it is to you to share that with other women and girls in particular is what we're going to talk about today. Tell, um, tell us about um, some of your background and the work that you've done. Well, I've kind of uh, been all over the place. Um, started uh, kind of in the physics engineering side, uh, but um, studied anthropology public policy in college, and then went from uh, there to uh, social work. Physics and the science side, and then... Yes, and then studying of cultures and policies relating to cultures. And then I really felt like um, to be able to do policy, I really needed to understand the micro, um, understand uh, communication with the one-on-one. -on -one. Um, so I actually went into social work and um, was a social worker for about 11 years. Um, the majority of it, uh, I was working um, in HIV, um, in the early days of HIV, and uh, for the County of Los Angeles and for UCLA Medical Center. So I got to see... Uh, things change in terms of the whole uh, health arena, um, especially in focus of HIV and AIDS. Why, and, did you, why, did, why did you accept that position? Oh, <laughs> um, it wasn't quite a um, position I was looking for. Um, my thesis partner in graduate school had been working for the County of Los Angeles, and she was working in, um, in the prenatal area. And she said, there's this job opening. Um, this is in 1990, um, early times of HIV. And uh, she said, there's a job opening um, at the county in HIV. And I asked her if she would uh, switch with me. Um, if, if um, I could do prenatal and then she could do the HIV and she said no. <laughs> so what was uh, your apprehension associated with the HIV? Okay, well it was in the early days of HIV so we're talking about, um, you know, people were still talking about is it in the air, um, how is it uh, you know, transmitted and so on. Um, and I was, uh, you know, a good Chinese Christian uh, woman who really was not um, versed in being able to talk about sex. <laughs> and this test site that um, I was being hired for was a national um, CDC, um, Center for Disease Control, um, seroprevalence test site. So we had a big questionnaire where we would have to talk with anyone who was coming to test about um, their sexual habits, um, all kinds of different things. And um, being a you know conservative Chinese um, Christian, I was not sure I wanted to to deal with that. But um, but How did, it, did it change during your you know your your experiences there? It actually changed beforehand. Um, so what happened was I kind of uh, put out a fleece. Um, really, I was trying to make an excuse not to take this job. Mm -hmm. And so I was going to talk with my pastor, uh, my parents, and a friend of mine. I figured my friend would say yes. I figured my pastor would say no. And I definitely thought my parents would say no. And so um, 
I talked with my friend. My friend said, yeah, that would be, you know, it would be good. Um, my pastor said um, yes, and actually in the future he um, actually sent people um, from the church uh, to do to have um, HIV to be HIV tested, and then um, he also uh, gave messages about HIV. This is early on in you know 1990, and so and then um, the part that I expected to be you know kind of have a way out was my parents, and my mom said, "Yeah, you know, I think it would be really helpful that you can help these families." And I said, you know, it's a deadly disease. <laughs> and um, and then I began reading um, everything on HIV, which wasn't very much, um, but HIV, um, homosexuality, sexuality, IV drug use, anything that was related to HIV. And um, I started reading, I read a book called um, How Will I Tell My Mother? And I actually just reached out to the co-writer of the book, but um, who was Steve Arterburn. But the book was on his brother, who um, had been a Christian, um, went into the homosexual lifestyle, and then um, came out of the lifestyle, and then found out he had full-blown AIDS and was given a few months to live. And his first thought was, how will I tell my mother? And as I was um, reading the book, I mean, I just started crying and realizing that um, it was important for Christians to be in the whole conversation of HIV. That it in the um, it was much at that time, especially was really the leprosy of today, and that um, that. Um, I, as a believer, really needed to step into that realm to be able to talk about it and, um, and to, to be a light um, in, in the arena. And so um, reading that book actually um, impacted me so much. And then um, I just I felt like, yes, um, I was supposed to step into this. Um, the other thing is... Um, I was working a lot with uh, young people, and um, I felt like God said to me that if you want to work at church, in the community, at school? Uh, both, church, community. Um, I also had run a preschool and after school program. So I, you know, and working with some of the volunteers. And so I, I just felt like it was. I felt like God said to me that if you want to reach um, young people, you have to be able to talk about sex. Just because you don't talk about it doesn't mean they're not going to do it, and um, that it's important to be able to talk about it. I didn't know quite what I would get into, um, but once I started working at, that was the county of Los Angeles, um, I knew that it was... Um, it was very important for, for me to be there um, and had amazing opportunities to talk with people and um, to really help people who were positive as well as negative, um, to really make choices and, and look at their lives um, without um, just kind of, uh, um, in a sense, moving by their own um, sexual passions. <laughs> so. What about the judgment piece? How did you work through that? Because there's a tendency and, um, for human beings and especially within religious or Christian environments particularly to be very judgmental mm -hmm. and um, not as open-minded as we like to believe ourselves to be. Yeah. How did you work through that? Well, I think a big part of it was one, um, I mean, just seeing how Jesus uh, interacted with people. Um, he interacted with the the tax collectors, with the prostitutes of the day. Um, he had re he spoke to in a very uh, kind way to, um, uh, for example, um, the Samaritan woman um, at the well. The Samaritans were um, uh, looked down upon by especially the Jewish people and you and especially as a man he wasn't supposed to be speaking to this woman and so um, 
just seeing how loving she, he was with her um, and really spoke into her life and then um, really saw a transformation in her life. So I really felt like it was important to be a light um, and to show love. Um, when I was in college, I had the opportunity of uh, working in Taiwan um, at an orphanage. Um, but one of the other ministries that was connected with the orphanage was a, a leper colony, actually, in Taiwan. And I thought leprosy was only back in the, you know, back in the days Bible. of the Bible. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. I didn't know it was current. And so we went over to this uh, leper colony and um, just we were able to show the love to these to these people and it was actually um, amazing because um, the the missionary who was involved with that uh, leper colony um, she was a white South African and on that day she had brought a black South African to be to speak at their service so after reaching out to all these lepers um, then uh, this black South African was sharing about his um, actually hatred towards the white South Africans and how going to Taiwan um, and meeting this white South African and seeing the healing and the forgiveness um, and you know the repentance of uh, for her on um, as a white South African on behalf of um, the whites in South Africa um, she was able to, to really turn this black South African into realizing that um, that you know whatever prejudice needed to be brought down and so he's sharing this it was pretty surreal sharing all of this with um, um, in Taiwan um, with lepers and it that really impacted me and um, wanting to be someone who would be of that kind of influence um, in the area of HIV, especially so early on when really the only ones who were in the conversation and involved in um, the whole HIV arena were uh, mostly um, the, the gay community. Mm -hmm. And so, so, yeah, that's why, you know, I was dealing with, I just felt like you know God is love and we needed to show love and really meet people in that way so you know we are so excited to know that you're going to be hosting a regular show here on Sylvia Global Media's network and sharing with the world um, your passions God's love and how that um, entering into conversations that aren't ordinarily um, shared with the world, you know, and in such good ways that, that demonstrate exactly what you just shared, you know, the, the ability to meet people where they are and to be a part of engaging in their lives without judgment and connecting the good that's around us. Give us some examples of some of those conversations that you envision giving voices voice to. Well, I think it's it's just um, important to have different people who haven't um, necessarily been able to have their voice shared yet they're doing significant things in terms of impacting people's lives. Um, you know, one of the women that uh, I had introduced you to, um, Unita, um, she's doing amazing things in in Indonesia and um, impacting the, the migrant workers, those who are um, domestic workers in different countries, and showing them, um, you know, basically the basics of business and entrepreneurial skills to these women who may not have even um, graduated, you know, gone past elementary school, and showing them how they could um, uh, find opportunities to create their own businesses um, and I would love to be able to have um, uh, your audience be able to hear about that. It's phenomenal um, what she's doing. It's absolutely phenomenal that in 18 months or less, 5,000 women, you know, and girls, 
touched, physically touched, lives changed around the work that she's doing. I mean, if those are the, you know, the, the types of conversations and knowledge and experience, experiences that your show is going to be sharing with others on Sylvia Global, you've already, you know, have um, put in motion exponential change, you know, in a good way in terms of your own passion and what God's calling you to do, to be able to bring those voices and give sight to people who are doing that work. Thank you. Thanks so much for being here today, Helena. Uh, we're gonna. This is part one of a series. You and I have a lot to talk about, and we look forward to having your show come up. And on our next conversation, we'll be sharing more about your work and the vision and voices associated with um, Helena Wong. Thank you so much for being here today. I'm your host, Gail Sylvia, and you're watching. Sylvia Global Media Network. Subs become a subscriber and just click subscribe here on YouTube. And you can also find more about us at sylviaglobal.com. Have a great day. Thanks, Helena. Thank you.